Hi you guys, Ginger Cook here. Wow, it's a Monday. It's a step-by-step -step Monday. This is the, you know, this is an hour where we spend a little time learning uh, how to paint acrylics uh, with, uh, in, in depth. Today we're going to be doing a sunflower and concord grapes and wait till you see how we're going to do that. Catch you in a second. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics. And we're back here to Ginger. We're hey. back. It's a normal schedule. Life is getting back to normal. a new normal. <laughs> a new normal. Well, you know, it doesn't really feel any different. It just well, it doesn't to us because this is what we do. This is what we do. It doesn't really feel any different. I'm not going anywhere. What the, what the governor? I'm not of Texas going out said. there. I don't care what the governor of Texas said, right? But no, um, no, no, nonetheless, no. we're here for you. And today we're going to not only be painting the sunflower and um, Concord drapes, but someone will win this painting. Where they can continue on with that that's been so successful and the only way you can win it is if you to are be here. part of our live audience and join us live and um, the girls will our mods will put out a link in a little bit um, we're going to talk a little bit as we paint tonight about uh, being able to recognize greens um, that's a, that's something that uh, you know, eludes people, and you've and as I draw this in, this little six by eight canvas, I've got it sort of this uh, dark brown color. Um, could have done anything, but I just needed a dark color. Could have been dark green. And um, if you, if we were to just, uh, you know, just do this with my, well, let's just go down here in the middle like this, right? Let's just divide this in half, right? I'm going to put my sunflower up here in this quadrant up here like that. Okay, and I know I'm going to want my grapes to be coming down kind of like this. Looks like a little mitten, doesn't it? Kind of this shape. All right, and I'm going to have um, some sort of leaf up here like this, and maybe another one up here like this, and um, maybe something poking down here like that as part of this. Uh, menagerie of leaf leaf stuff okay and the my sunflower is going to be looking this way in that direction so these petals here are going to be longer on this side so my circle I'm going to have a circle here but there's going to be more more um, petals on this side of my sunflower than on the other side. Does that make sense? So this this side will be the shorter side, like so. And uh, as they come out this way, they'll be a little longer. Okay. So does that make does that make sense? Maybe that to, I don't know. And so the same thing here. So my inside of my sunflower is going to be wider on this part than on this part. And, um, okay, you do you with me there, and maybe some of this will be folded back. I do have a reference photo. This will be available in our Academy, Beginners Acrylic Academy, uh, for our, all our senior and junior members and basic supporters probably tomorrow. The actual seals, you actually see the photograph I'm using as a reference. Um, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and draw in some um, of my grapes, just making little circles. And because uh, they go, the sunflower actually is over the grapes, so that's the first thing. You know, when you're painting anything, you've got to paint the farthest things away first, and then um, go ahead and uh, uh, there's some sort of like little deep little shadow space, and then we've got some new ones right here. We're going to do that. Sometimes you just see part of one; you don't see the whole circle. It's not just. And sometimes they're touching, sometimes they're not. Maybe at the bottom you'll just see a couple like that sticking out like that. There you go. So that's, um, there you go. There's that one. And then we'll bring these down like this. It doesn't hurt to draw them out. 
Now, John, while I'm doing this, do you have any questions from anybody or anybody wanting to know what we're doing so far? So far, it's all quiet. There's chit chat. I'm glad to see us back on the live event. They were kind of lost over the weekend. Well, we really appreciate the fact that you guys, most of you, have been, have been hanging in there with us, right? That means a lot. Um, and uh, so again, we, like I say, we really appreciate that. Now, I've got a, a leaf here that's coming out like this that I'm going to just draw like in here like that. So there's no point in painting something where my leaf is going to catch over it. And I've got a leaf that's going to be catching over part of this like so. And let's see if I can't get this the shape of this leaf up a little better. Let's change, let's change colors so that I'll know. So I know I've got a, a, a leaf that's kind of coming up like that. Now someone's going to ask, what are these pencils? These are called, we have these in our store on Amazon. These are um, a pastel pencil, and um, we just like them. Uh, Robin Coates sent us a whole set of them. The Ger Gerbaldi, I think, or something, aren't they, John? Can yes. You? And she sent us a whole um, set of all the colors. Those colors I probably use the most, I have to say, are white. And you can buy just the white ones if you want them. Um, people said, what about a watercolor pencil? I, I know a lot of acrylic artists use just a watercolor pencil. You can do that too. Whatever you want. How's that? Um, I would say that that would be a fair thing. And let's see, what else I got here? Here's a yellow pencil. So now I'm going to, I'm going to say, I've got, I know I've got these, these coming over here. I'll just, just put these in yellow just so I sort of know what I've got here, right? All right, so everybody's kind of clear on what I've drawn in here. Yes and yes. Here's our. Now the paints we're using are heavy body acrylics. Um, lots of different colors. There's cad red medium. This is um, um, a light red from Holbein that looks very similar to cad red. This is yellow oxide. This is yellow ochre. This is sort of the light green we found. Um, uh, it was uh, was a Holbein color, but you don't need luminous green, but we, you can make a light green. Here's the phthalo green, and there's um, this is an interesting color. Um, this is called marigold from Holbein. It's a deep, rich, um, bright gold. This is cad yellow medium. This is these are both cad yellow light, different brands, and you can see how much um, lighter this one is than that one. This phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, dazzling purple. One's Holbein, one's um, Matisse, and this is a, a Holbein Mauve. So those are pretty much the colors I've got. All right, that's what we're going to be using. We're going to just, uh, I'm going to just paint this in as we talk um, and try to keep it uh, fairly, move it, move it along. How's that? So I'm going to start with a Dazneen Purple and uh, a little bit of Ultramarine Blue. I want those two colors together. And I've drawn out these... Um, uh, you see, I'm just using my. I want you to see how I'm doing it. Can you put your, put your, camera right there where my hand is, John? Right. Yes. I, I'm touching it, and then I'm going around in a circle using my wrist and expanding out. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to draw the circle like that. Put your brush and go around in a circle until you get, until you get the shape you want. Make sense? All right. Everybody's with me on that. I can do that fairly quickly. Yes and yes. And I need to get new paint once in a while. The brush does not have any water on it. There's no water on this brush. It's not even a damp brush. I, I want pretty much full coverage on this. Is that your quarter inch? It's a quarter inch angle brush. Now, people say, well, where do you get those brushes? Well, our, you know, lots of stores sell them. They're by Silver, the Silver Company. These are the Ruby Satin Short Handled Angles. And I prefer the company, uh, the the um, the brush guys, because if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, you can get a five percent discount. And they do that all the time, and it's on any brush that's in there. The Arpurpus brush is any old brush that you think you might want. Just put it in your cart at the very end when you check out. Use my name for checking out, and you get that five percent discount. And I I personally want to say how much I prefer to promote somebody that does something for those of us who uh, YouTube is a, is, a, is a main feature of your education, okay? 
because I just think that these big companies ignore it. Let me give you an example in point. Um, we're using, these are canvas sheets, okay? And they come from, a, and they're called, they're pinned to a package, they're paramount. I don't know if I've got a, um, a little example. You know, they're tend to a, a thing, and we've been using, we, we did these on our quarantine quickies. We did, um, oh gosh, um, for 60 days, and you've seen me use them on, 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 on a lot of my YouTube videos have these. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, here, here's what one looks like. Here's what a Paramount sheet looks like. And, and Jerry uh, has been selling these, right? Well, th they're out now. They don't have any. You're not going to get any more of these uh, tablets till they said September. So our good friend uh, uh, who lives, who owns a Jerry store, part owner of a Jerry store in, um, and manager in San Antonio, I called him up and I said, because one of our one of our viewers wrote and said, I can't find these anymore. What am I supposed to do, right? And so I said, well, do you know, um, what, you know, when people can, you know, expect to get a few more, right? And and what he said was was, was extremely interesting to me. He he, he said, uh, I have 18 uh, or 16 or 17 or something like that. He says. I have in stock, and he says, I'm, and also, he had a lot of, the other thing people can't get is a lot of the um, golden paint. He's got a ton of golden paint there, and you can order directly from him in San, in, in San Antonio, uh, Texas, Jerry's Heart of Rama, George Rodriguez, San Antonio, Texas, and um, um, so you, you might want to, you know, he's, he's on the spot there, and he's willing to help if you want more of those. Is that a good, fairly good explanation, John? Yes, very much so. Yeah, I'm putting a little bit of green and yellow oxide together. I think I'll just come in the middle of this one here. Just paint that kind of this dark color. Okay. All right, so we've changed brushes. Nothing happened. I know it's hard to see what I'm painting. Now I've got a little phthalo blue and white. And I put a tiny bit of this mauve color in it. I'm going to mix this. That's pretty, isn't it? little bit of that mauve color and I want to come up here like this and add a little bit of this nice light uh, sky color here. I just thought that would be nice. I hear some sort of humming in the background. Is somebody mowing a lawn or something? What yes, on earth is that? Yes. They're doing the leaf blowing. Leaf blowing, yeah, leaf blowing. Yep, leaf blowing. All right, so any questions, John? Uh, Pat just asked, are there uh, PAC's personal art coaching included with the Junior Academy? Personal art coaching is only with the Senior Academy. Junior, uh, the Junior Academy is, is uh, for the beginner lessons is uh, $16.95 a month, and you have over 200 lessons that you can choose from. Isn't it 250 well, no, uh, what, which one? The Junior Academy. How many lessons in the Junior Academy? We've They're got all, only about 50 or 60. About 50 plus, or the 60 plus all the quarantine, plus all the quarantine quickies that are going to go in there, right? Yeah. But now the Senior Academy has over 500 videos between the wave and water and that, and that comes with personal art coaching. Um, if you think about it, most the, the service that we offer with personal art coaching, most people charge over $1,000 for. We started off kind of pricing it really low. We were sort of crazy when we did it, and we've still stuck with it. But, I mean, you, there's nowhere you can find anything even remotely like that anywhere. Anyway, not for that price point. Not, certainly not for that price point. Okay, so I'm going to come around here and we, just try to remember what how you made these colors. I'm just going to come up here like that, put a little of that color in there. It's just a little bit of my blue sky, yeah? Yes and yes. And already you're going, I don't see a thing, Ginger. What did you paint? Okay, so that's good. Sorry. And then let's see what else. I'm trying to just think of what I can paint in here without messing up my leaves here. All right, so we got a little phthalo green. And let's try a little yellow oxide because that will kind of make this all, this green here. Let's take a little bit of that and put in a leaf. Yeah, a little bit of a leaf here. That, we're starting with our darkest leaf color first. Uh, may not be the color the leaf ends up, but that's going to be our darkest one first. So I just have to come in here like that and see there's our, our little leaf. And see that was yellow oxide and a little phthalo green. That's how we made that color. And um, I think I want a little more yellow oxide in that. So right now it's about 50-50.
because red, gray, is green. It turns out this is what I said we talk about in this video is that what happens is is that red, gray is your green because it's opposite itself on the color wheel. All right. So why why is that important? Is that you've got to determine if something's an olive green or if it's a blue green color, and because I'm uh and and then how to mix those. That's really important. We've got other videos on YouTube that kind of explain that too, but I would say that's something that you might want to consider really looking at when we're talking about greens. All right, so we're just going to have some little odd shapes of broken leaves up in here like that. All right, so that's that's coming up there and then let's just um what do we know for sure? We know that we know we want this to be a green leaf. Here, and I want a little more yellow oxide with that one. That one's going to be a little bit lighter because it's forward. Well, let's see, I'm going to just bring that up here and just put this leaf in here like that. Sometimes if you put some stuff in, it helps you see where, where you need to go. And then the same thing with this one. A little more yellow oxide with this color. And we're going to say, see it's a little bit more of a gold colored leaf here. And we're going to bring that up around here like that. And uh, it's got a really high, my little leaf here, it's got a high shoulder. Think of it, think of the, of these as shoulders maybe. Top of a heart. So that one's got a pretty high one there. And this one does too. It's got a really nice high shoulder there. It's part of our leaf. And let's see, what else do we got here? Okay, so we got a little bit of yellow and purple make a or make kind of a gray color. So I want a, um, a little more yellow in that. That's that light yellow, cad yellow light. And a little bit more yellow in that. So this is a sort of a lighter, kind of a gray green under here. If you guys see how I made that, but so what we're doing, we're saying under here that happened is um, we've got some different greens that are maybe where some of these leaves are just kind of hiding underneath here. We're not really talking about them. Okay, let's take some phthalo green and purple, make a dark color. And it'll come right up under here like that. Say all oh, this is pretty dark over here. And the same thing over here too. I want this pretty dark over here. Yeah, let's just say that's pretty dark back going back this way. Sometimes when you're looking at a photograph that's very busy, one of the things you've got to do as an artist is ask yourself the question, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? That's a, that's a key thing to ask. And um, you want to ask yourself that um, all the time. What can I eliminate? Well, and let me give you an example of something you might want to eliminate. Suppose, for an example, that you had a, um, uh, a a really nice photograph. Maybe somebody went to France or something and took a gave a great picture, and it was wonderful. Except it had a lot of clotheslines in the picture, or going across, or power lines, or something. You wouldn't necessarily want to put those in. Okay, does that make sense? So um, you you want to think about what your you know what your just because the picture has it doesn't mean necessarily that you want it. Does that make sense? So see how we're kind of laying that in there. Now this was just the first uh, step of that. Now this is pretty dry right here. So now I'm going to get out my zinc light. And the thing about Concord grapes, do you know Concord grapes? happen in the fall. Those are the ones that kind of that they they're sweet on the inside and they got the big seed and they turn your mouth kind of inside out when you when you chew on the skin. You kind of sweet sour thing all at once. And when I remember grow, going to school in, in in elementary school, we had a walk up. We walked to school and we cut across a lot of back paths. We didn't take the road, and uh, we would go right past this Concord grape uh, um, vineyard that belonged to the, this, these people that also had a big barn. And they raised minks in this barn. You could kind of smell the dead fish. They were feeding them. So anyway, uh, I remember just getting these wonderful ripe Concord grapes. 
um, just as you walk by. They're just so per so perfect. Such a great grape. Don't you, you like Concord grapes, John? I I prefer the uh, the uh, the green ones. So this is mixing white. Now my brush is damp. And this is mixing white, and we're going over these a little bit. You like the green ones, huh? Well, I mean, Concord grapes are one of those things where you eat them sometimes, and some, you know, you can only eat so many of those, right? And then you can't. Does it make sense? Yes. You, you've got them, and then you don't. So we're... But they're, 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 almost, they're, they're, almost, they're almost dusty looking, which is why we're using the, the transparent white. Now the question comes up often, I don't have any transparent zinc white or I don't have any transparent mixing white, what can I use? Nothing. You really, you can't, there's no substitute for it. It's just like if you told me I don't have any white, what can I do? Go to the store and get some white. But it would tell you, right? So any questions, John? Uh, nothing that I am seeing that hasn't been able to be answered. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now, okay, we're still working on that. Now, some of these might be a little bit wetter than normal, but that's all right. We're just putting this at this a little bit wetter. Here's a little trick. Do you know how to do this? Like put a little paint right next to where you're working. Then you don't have to go clear down there to your palette. You can just grab it, yeah? Grab a little bit. Now somebody asked a question the other day. They said one of the things that they disliked immensely the most about acrylics was that they're a little dis they're deceiving in that acrylics dry darker. And you may have noticed that too. You just think you're all swell, and then you're not, right? Because they have dried darker on you. Well, what I'm going to suggest is if you didn't like that effect and you wanted to be real bold and adventuresome, okay, what you might get is you buy some golden absorbent ground. And, you know, you have to be kind of a sock folder to do this because you've got to prep your canvases like a couple days ahead of time that you're going to be using. And do any of the paintings you were normally going to do, just you, you paint on top of that surface. And what happened is because it's a little bit, if it's absorbent like water, like paper, it will, um, the colors will seem, uh, when, when it dries, they'll seem slightly lighter. So it'll be the opposite. Your colors will dry lighter. Might be a fun experiment for some of you guys. You know, we're just going to suggest some grapes in there that might be just somewhere hiding in there, right? And, um, all right, so we're, we're pretty, that's the first coat on these guys, right? Yes and yes. You can kind of see they're coming in there. So John is being really, uh, tonight, we're trying something a little different tonight. John is, instead of asking me a lot of questions, if John knows the answer to them, He's answering them, if our mods know the answer, so that we have more of a continuous flow with the video. What do you guys think? How do you like that? I mean, I'm happy to answer questions, but if we can maybe be, make it a little more efficient. That's what we're trying out tonight. So let us know if you found that helpful. I'm curious if you like that. All right. Ooh, too much paint. Now at some point, if the, if the purple's too wet, then it doesn't work. The purple has to be just almost completely dry. Now, everybody knows the rule, I think, about... Um, yellow only painting over white and the sunflower is going to be yellow but I, I still want to paint my leaves behind there so I'm going to do that now. Any questions Sean? Uh, negative. All right. All right. So pleased to hear that. A little of that bright green color. 
and yellow oxide and that bring, bright green color make a bright green, but it's toned down because yellow ox, well that's yellow ochre, has um, has red in it. I'm just going to tap this on this uh, leaf here. So many different ways to paint stuff, you guys. Um, try some different brush strokes, different ways to, to do something, you know. Just tapping here, using the kind of to twenty twenty my brush to the side here. Okay, that's kind of nice. I kind of like this. I think I'd like this similar, even though it's not quite like that in the picture. I like this te technique more. Want this a little bit brighter here. This one, let's see, a little more red in it though. Okay, so I still want something bright though. There are lots of mixing greens in this. Okay, this green's a little bit brighter. Let's put a little yellow ochre in that. There we go. I'm just going to say here's our leaf. this kind of a, you know, you do something like this that has a um, sort of a texture to it. The other thing that comes up quite often is um, the type of painter you are as far as um, are you a soft body or heavy body painter? I'll think about that for a minute. Are you a soft body or heavy body painter? Because that makes a big difference as to um, how you apply paint. And for instance, if you're using a state wet palette, chances are you are a soft body painter because that stay wet, even if you're using heavy body paints, that stay wet will, um, let's see if I like that, I don't think. I like that. Let's just take that out. Is the marigold close to Indian yellow? Yeah, marigold and Indian yellow, I'd say very close. Indian yellow is a, I, I, you know, I, I've never really had a lot of Indian yellow, but I love that color. I know my daughter uses it a lot, and it's a neat color, isn't it, Indian yellow? Yes, it's, it's exactly what it is. For sure. Yep. Now I'm, in, I'm into the cad yellow light now. Did you know if you mix white with cad yellow medium, you cannot get cad yellow light? Did you guys know that? So you'd think you could, but you can't. You'll get a lighter yellow, but it will not be the same. Yellow is a primary, so if you're a person that likes doing flowers, if you're one of these people, like many of us are, that enjoy painting flowers, um, if you're going to invest in paint, consider, uh, uh, seriously, consider, uh, you know, your your different reds and yellows is not is a good investment. You know, think about that. that I think it's a wonderful investment when you're, let's see, just a little bit lighter on that leaf. And again, these these dry a little bit lighter, but um, are a little darker. But that's all right. We'll just we'll keep going with this. Let's see what we got. Um, guess we needed to get some of these leaves up here too, didn't we? We'll use a little bit of yellow oxide on some of these. Just tap this in here. Okay, all right, so we've got some grapes sort of roughed in. We've got uh, a few more leaves we could rough in. Maybe something in here like this, sort of a 
suggest that there's something showing here like that. All right, so now my next thing is to um, probably give this a good dry. Do you have anything you want to show while I dry this, John? Well, we can show the um, uh, coffee mug. All right, John's going to show you something. I'm going to dry. This is my new hair dryer. That's a note from who it's from to remind you. And this it's is Connie. from Connie. <laughs> We and it's super Carol quiet. If you've missed this, it is super quiet. Thank you so much, Connie. This is, like, awesome. Okay, while she's drawing that, I want to remind you that during the quarantine, uh, quickly we've made some coffee mugs and totes, and we'll be adding some more things to them. Uh, here's the link for the mugs. I believe the mods have got it as well, but I just put it in right there as well, which is way different from when you see. Um, we had just, nobody really said anything nasty in regards to me being on the show. They just want more of Ginger teaching, and since we're trying to do something different, since she teaches on Mondays and Thursdays, we're just going to try the quiet. But it seems like you people aren't liking that. Oh, let's bring the boss back. What, what, people aren't happy with it? No, they come for the love and bantering. They, they, they think we're fighting. <laughs> okay. All right, we can just go back to what we were doing, babe. We ain't fighting, so... We don't fight. We don't fight. All right, so... All right, now remember, here's the thing, you guys. When you're doing any kind of yellow anything, yeah... You've got to uh, paint, um, paint, use white first, yeah? You're all with me. Think about the direction that, to look at the direction of, is the, are the petals going clockwise or counterclockwise? Or are some of these uh, coming down like this? These are going down. It's not just, um, you have to give a little thought to shape. Um, and, uh, you know, some are going to be overlapping others, but um, usually on a sunflower, there's usually a couple couple layers of, of petals. We don't have to do them all, but you do want to kind of take care to think about the the shape of uh, the petal and the direction it's going, uh, which is good, yeah. Okay, there we go. Now the grapes aren't done. I just, we have to do this. Does it make sense? All right, now I'm going to say this one's kind of going that way. Well, basically, that's got to be done so it can dry. Yeah, yeah, it's got to dry so that we can. It's got to dry so that we can then go on to uh, uh, put the color on. But you know, what is it about sunflowers? They're so nice. Um, they're just beautiful, and, and I love the fact that they, you know, if you. They grow in Texas too, and if you have one, they'll just face the. You know, they're like a little radar. They just face the sun wherever it goes. Kind of, it, I think they're kind of neat, kind of special. You ever, maybe you hadn't thought about that, John, but, well, my horse used to think they were delicious. He'd wait till they got really big and then he'd eat them. The sunflowers? Yeah, just love them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Charlie, you see, you love the seeds, sunflower seeds? Yeah. I personally, no. Did you ever do pumpkin seeds? Nope, he did those two. Okay, well, you may not be a seed person. Um, well, aren't nuts, peanuts what? are a seed, aren't they? Well, peanuts are, I don't know, are peanuts a seed? I have no idea, are and they? aren't beans a seed? The, the seed in the bean, so. I don't it's, know. It's, it's, <laughs> Why are you asking all these hard well, questions? Well, you you, you, you've made the statement. I did, but I had no idea it was going to lead to this. You know, such controversy. Well, we, we, we tried our little experiment, and it seems like, you know, there are several of you that still prefer the, the teaching, and, I, and, and I'm and i sorry, but you're the minority, and for that... You go to our academy, because that's what it's like. That's it's just what it's me. like. You want to know what teaching is like, go do it, you know, find it in our academy. That's I think exactly the majority has thought. to rule here, and I'm back, people. There you go. You may be sorry. John's back, right? John's, that's exactly so. John's back. Yeah, see? So Well, so we want to go back and uh, thank Jigger for the donation that came in through the uh, Super Chat. 
our Canadian buddy. He is an archaeologist. The artist archaeologist is what the title, or he or she, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, Jacqueline did a donation through PayPal. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. And we had another one in there, and that was from, what was your name? And Donna, thank you for using the PayPal system. And yep, that's what we got so far. Thank you guys very much for the donations. It keeps us floating. We did uh, scholarship a couple people today with your generous donations. We appreciate that. Yeah, and, it's, and it makes it it's very nice uh, to be able to do that. Um, I don't think anybody thought that this was going to go on this long um, as far as um, uh, the quarantines and stuff, because not all, I mean, while some states are opening up, a lot of people are not working. So um, their jobs just yeah, aren't I mean, there we, anymore. Yeah, we've had a lot of people have to drop out from us, even though we're very, what we consider very reasonably priced. I mean, it's, is the choice is dinner on the table or ginger? So, so, you know, so, th so sometimes there's... Sometimes you have to be fed. So, uh, you know... Uh, and we do have one person who signed up for a month, and they, they do it quite often. They sign up for a month, and they immediately send to me, stop my, my membership, I just signed up for the month, and I'm good to go. Because they can do a month at a time. They do a month when they have a month, and you can do that too, you know. Where John's really kind of... I want to say Johnny on the spot with that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't pass it up, could you? I couldn't. No. I couldn't. I couldn't pass it up, baby. No, I'm I, so sorry. I'm sorry, but you, but it's true. You are. You, you know, you are, right? I and, try uh, to be proactive. Yeah, just, yeah, I know. So let's see. Let's get into a smaller brush here for that. I'm just kind of letting all that dry. But then, I, I don't know why I thought this was, when I saw the reference photo, I thought this was just so pretty. This, um. There's the mug link once again. It also, the um, promo item is the mug, and if I remember after the show, I will put the mug link into our description now, too. So that will show up after the show. So what's special about the promo item, John? The promo item is what YouTube picks out to show during a live show, which I don't know if you've cleared it, if you can get it to come back. Possibly if you left and come back in, or if you change live chat to top chat, It'll show the promo item again. And that has the, uh, the mug. That's our number one mug is the lilac mug. We, have, we did 13, and we think we're going to add a couple more, too. There's um, a few more that I just, I personally would like to have, so I figured if I'd want them, somebody else may want them. And then I, uh, just see what you guys think about this, too, and it may be just crazy, but I thought that some people, you know, there's a really good picture of John and I that was taken in Sweden by Mona. Oh, yeah, and no, I we, thought it might be just to have fun mug with the two of us and then, the you know, all in this together kind of thing. So, How many people would want a mug with our mugs on it? Just saying. <laughs> well, John, John isn't sure anybody would want it. And I, I said, just, well, it just don't, it just doesn't seem like something I'd want. Well, you like our picture, don't you? Of course. I, I love the one Mona did, and I like the one that we did up in... Um, Canada, at Peggy's yeah, Cove. Yeah, with, the, with, with the Peggy's lighthouse. Cove with, um, with Nicole Nappy. Yeah. That was such a fun day with her. Just so enjoyed that. She's one of, she uh, lives up in the... the now, uh, Patricia's asking, which I don't think this is true anymore, Ginger, is this all base coating right now that you're doing? No, I'm doing, I'm doing now highlights. Now we're starting to get to the final product. I'm getting highlights now. You see, I'm, see how we keep adding colors, right? So you're starting to get the depth and the, the, the roundness the of the of grapes. Turning, putting the darks and the lights on the, you know, I mean, the underside of the of the grapes is darker, starting to put the the lights and the darks on here like that. And saying that, you know, if you figure it out, for usually about, about three to six, we've got some darker grapes. And, you know, they're, uh, I'm, the purple and um, yellow are complements, so I'll probably put a little purple right like that. Right snug there, into and then, then, then I'll come back later with a few little highlights, kind of like that. Now, not on all the grapes, but just in a couple. See, so they'll have a few little highlights just to, you know, kind of do something like that, because I think it's pretty. Now, Peggy has a good question here for you. Mm. My greens dried much darker and now need advice on what to mix to put them on the lighter side 
back to my Tuscany picture. Okay, here's the thing. And should I mix, now wait, and should yeah. I use phthalo green in the mix? Well, you don't have to, but here's the thing. If you want a light green, take a black and white picture of what you're trying to paint. All right? Take a black and white picture. Here, can you print me out a black and white picture of my Tuscany painting with the grapes and everything in that? Is that possible? Are we talking about the wine one? The wine one. The wine one. Yeah. The wine in the, in the hills. And well, the I probably already have that made because we have it on the Academy. Yeah, so can you just print me out a black and white of that? Anything for you, my queen. All right, we're going to answer that, and I'm going to show you. Stay tuned, because we're going to answer that in a way Ooh, that Ooh, it's going to be a cliffhanger. So, so totally, totally take all the guesswork out of any of that stuff, right? Yes and yes? Yeah, yes and yes. Yes and yes. All right, good, because I want you all to agree you with said, me on this. Uh, wait, wait, you said to dry brush zinc on the grapes, would it work the same for a window glare? Yes. Yeah, you use zinc white for all the reflections. and. Yes, 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 yeah. and yes. Not this is fine. just a little light green and dots. If I was making it bigger, I would follow the pattern a little bit closer. You know on YouTube I did a really pretty inside of a sunflower, uh, just the sunflower, you know, with a close-up of that. We're not doing that much detail here because we're making this larger. Yes and yes. But we're going to suggest it, that we have the inside of the sunflower. Sometimes you can just suggest something, and sometimes you can't. So, um... Not to be too mysterious about it, but, you know, sometimes there's just certain things that have to be on the inside and certain... And so now I'm going to use a little bit of that marigold color and uh, dot that on there very tiny. And this is just the corner of the brush. If you're not doing that, why? Um, it, here's a tip. Vary the size of your brush strokes. I see some people send me artwork and they've used the same size brush stroke on everything they're doing. And, something, you know. Something I would do. Vary the size of your brush strokes. Very important. Yes? Vary the color, vary the size. Do you remember? There it is. So, um, you know, that'll make such a big difference. You're painting something. And I think I think this would be a fun painting to win because it's um uh it's got so many um colors in it, it would go in a lot of places. That's what I'm thinking. Might be fun to win anyway, yes and yes. A little bit of light green here. A little bit of yellow in it. And I'll show you how we're doing that. One thing about acrylics, if you get something too dark, you can always go lighter. You just dry it and make the next layer lighter. You just, I always start off, start off with the darkest things first, and then uh, and then keep and then work toward my uh, darker. You know, work work toward things being a little bit darker. Okay, a little bit of this purple right here. Do a little bit of this purple here too. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna come up with an orange. I want a yellow, cad yellow medium and cad red medium make a very good orange, but it's about 75% yellow and about 25% red. Does that make sense? So we're gonna come around here like this. Is the center of our sunflower, and I'm just using my angle brush to tap this out. One side's a little bit fatter than another, it's not even. Okay, that's so. You're mainly interested in having the grapes, right? I, With I, the wine bottle, that part of it. No, I want the, she wants to know how to do the background. This lady wants to know how to fix the background color. She got it too dark green. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's just pure yellow here now. Dropping a few little drops of that on there. Okay. 
So that has a nice, um, it's a little bit more purple. This little side, size and side and part is in shades, so this has got to be a little darker right here. Got a little bit of shadow there. There we go. Okay, so now John's John's working on that. I'm working on um, just Coming to keep short, playing with the lights and the darks here, right? One of the things I want to do is that with the light green is I want this sort of light green color, kind of a gold green. And I want to come in here next to the grapes. John's kind of printing that out. And just in a couple places, I want to suggest, I want this a little bit lighter than it was. Sometimes you just have to have something a little bit lighter. Oh, that's an interesting one. What? John, could you add a small photo of you and Ginger on the back of the mug? Oh, we could do that. That's a good idea. We could do that, too. Well, Vivian's got a question, I think, more for me than you. Yeah? How do you apply the inverted negative black and white picture? A lot of times when we do a picture, you want to see really the reverse of it to see where things are. Because a lot of times you can't see the shadow detail or the highlight detail, um, depending upon how it was shot. And a lot of times you're going to get a different perspective of the contrast as well by, by inverting it. It's something I've always done in photography. I've always used, did them both ways, just flip it. and just, I just thought other people would like that, but I know some people use the inverted one for the traceable instead of the regular one because it's easier to see. Now what I'm doing now is adding just a touch. It's in my photo. There's a touch of this red on the leaves. It's not, I'm not even being clever. It's a, yeah, not even clever, so I'm going to show that in a second here. Well, yeah, i got to zoom out for that. So, um, uh, the next time I dry something, I might need something to just sit here and dry, I'll show that, right? Yes and yes. Let's put a little bit of light yellow somewhere here, too. Just a bit of light, light yellow. Yeah, see, it's already kind of coming together a little bit, yeah? <laughs> At least you made a donation through the Super Chat, contributing to the Keep John Around Fund. We love your contributions to the show. Thank oh. you, my dear. <laughs> okay, so all right. You. Thank you. What brand of chalk are you using? That's a... Um, that, that's a I can never say the God. name, you guys. And you're asking me to say those words. It's, um, here, take one it's of these Giovanni pieces of chalk something. and just, it's in our Amazon store, but it's wonderful stuff. I really like it. Oh, it's Gioconda. Gioconda, something. It's Gioconda. Well, uh, well, think about like, um, like a snake or something. Yeah, like but Gio. But Gio. Yeah, it's G-I-O-Conda. So it's Gioconda. I can tell it when I see it. Doesn't it, Ginger's hair look beautiful? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You look pretty good tonight. Thank you. Nice of you to say. Oh, that was Lori that said it. I bet you thought it was me, didn't you? Well, I can truck. I can count on Lori to say something nice, <laughs> right? Yes, Lori. Yes and yes. Will glazing compound create the same effect as zinc white? No. We tried it. We keep we keep telling you there's no effect. <laughs> you like can't zinc do it. white, you can't do it. Yeah. Um now, something that kind of will is matte medium. Layers and layers of matte medium will make kind of a white haze, but it won't be quite the same. But it's if you want something hazy, but not quite as hazy as, um, as say, zinc white, right? You can, or, or mixing white, you can use, um, you can use um, a matte medium. So that's sort of interesting in itself, yes and yes. There, see, so now the grapes are sort of showing up. Um, let me just let this dry for a second, and I want to show you something. The question was asked, she's, she did this painting, okay? 
And that was one of our uh, Monday night lessons. And what she said was that this, if I understood her correctly, this background was getting too dark for her and the greens, and she needed to know how to lighten it. So I want you to look at my gray scale here. I think I have another. I wonder where that big gray scale is. Do you remember where that is, the big one? Nothing of course, my queen. John knows where that is, and that would even be more helpful to you, I think, than this one. All your color wheels come with a gray scale, but John, John kind of knows. But basically, while he's finding that, on one side of the gray scale, you have white and some tones of gray, and then on the other side, you have black and tones of gray. And here's the thing. If you are, if you'll notice that this gray right here, let me see if I can show you, this gray right here, this one right here is on this light side of the grayscale. So is this, right? So is this. So are some of these. So what you have to do, uh, write this down because this this will save you out. You know, people say they can't afford my art lessons. I'll tell you something. I save you so much paint because if you get if you do it right, you don't mix gobs of paint you can't use. But just just as a, just as an aside here, not that we're justifying. But here's the thing. If, you're, if, if anything falls on this side of the grayscale, 98% of your color is either going to be white or yellow. 98%. 98 to 99% is going to be white or yellow. So that being said, you have to start. If you're talking about you know, some sort of light gold green color, then you've got to start with your whites and maybe some ye you know, your yellows, maybe some white, and then start adding your greens to it, your blues and your greens to it to get the light color. Conversely, if it's on this side of the grayscale, John's still looking for that other one. Conversely, if it's on this side of the grayscale, like it's down here, see where my name is? Can you guys see that right down in here? Then you start with the green and add the yellow. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be the 98% sort of a dark green color with then you add yellow to lighten it. So to make a dark green might be ultramarine blue if it's a, if it's a, a, again, it depends. It would probably be ultramarine blue and and maybe some brown, and then you add yellow to it, that kind of thing. Or if you're using a phthalo green, you probably would add ultramarine blue to it, maybe a bit of red. If you want an olive shade or a brighter shade, see, ultramarine oh, phthalo green is a very blue green. So if in order to get it to look olive, you've got to. Uh, I got no idea. John can't find it, but I think I I think I explained it right. I think that's what you, and that's with anything. It's not just with greens. If you do a black and white and it shows up on the light side of this grayscale, chances are it's going to be 98% white and then something else, 98 to 97. So start with the white and then add your colors, and you'll never overmix and, and, and keep making the wrong colors. Helpful? Yes. Okay, so. Oh, he found it. <laughs> Well, too late now. I threw the paper on the floor. Here, get the paper, John. <laughs> Grab the paper. This is the grayscale you want to buy. John finally found it, okay? This is the grayscale you want to buy. You see that? You see how these grays are more like this gray? And, you know, so if it's on this lighter side of the grayscale, like this and all up in here, see, like this, these are all starting with your lightest color. We'll put, the, we'll put this somewhere we can find it again. John, I'm sorry you had to work, work so hard to find that. Just put that up in there. So that's that's the secret of color mixing um, and not over mixing. So any questions now that I have explained that so well, huh? Yeah, now we're talking about the puzzle. That's more important. Well, what can I, what can I say, right? I have uh, posted the second in the puzzle, and you notice I, I was missing a piece, but the person came through, and we have the last piece of the puzzle. So I will be starting to work on some more of that tonight. I'll record it for you on my progress for all those that like to follow along. And we know there are some people that find this very boring. Like me? Uh, I wasn't mentioning any names. Well, I just queen. thought he just goes on and on with it, with that thing. But, I mean, it, did, it is interesting because it takes forever. I think he really wanted you guys to see how long it takes to... No, I didn't care about that at all. I just I just thought it was interesting how, you, how, you, how it all comes together. Just... My opinion. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying it's well. Maybe I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you were. I asked her to look at it. Wouldn't to ask her what she thinks. You really? Twenty minutes for this? Really? So now we're putting our sunflower in. K 
Katie and Sheldon say, Ginger and John, both of you sound more relaxed and natural with your back and forth with each other. Laughter, joy brings happiness and joy to all of us. Oh, thank you. They didn't like the silent treatment. Okay. Well, hey, we, we were, tried it. We tried it. It you was know, suggested. Was suggested. We said we didn't think it. it was a good idea. But you know, we tried it to see, just to see how we, how we, how we did here. That really punches that yellow up, doesn't it? Yeah, and I love that um, this um, yellow, this kind of gold yellow color. It's so pretty. Is that now, the, if you didn't have that color, how would you mix it? Well, you'd probably take this with a tiny bit of cad red medium. And let me see how close I could get to making this marigold color. Let's see, cad, could, 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 let's see. this is cad yellow medium, tiny bit of cad red. I thought you're getting too orange. Well, you have to use a lot of yellow. Yeah. It's just to a get teeny, it. And you teeny, can you can kind of get it, but not quite, right? Yeah. It's a little too translucent. You know, I almost got it. Look at that. See? It's darn close. It's, it's it's close. You can mix it. You, you can, can mix it. It won't it. be as bright though. This is this is this will be brighter because it's pure pigment. Does that make sense? It's pure pigment, so it definitely will be brighter if you're using this. All right, getting thanks for the explanation. Good job. Very helpful. So yeah, you done good. Well, I mean, I think that that's it's nice to know that stuff, right? Because um, this. The thing of it is you can buy all the colors, like for instance, it was a really fun to use all those um, Salvador paints because they had just, you didn't hardly have to mix any colors at all. You just grabbed a color and go, oh, this is pretty, let me go with this, right? <laughs> you got spoiled pretty easily. I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a nice... Um, it's a nice set. Well, matter of fact, we checked to see if they were in stock yet, and they are not, but the new picture is there. Ooh, they have updated get. the product. You're getting three times the amount of white. And the brushes are now put in a little card holder, which is, you know, a little step up. And the box is bigger. I mean, they had to retool this whole thing just because we opened our mouths. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive, actually, you guys. Yeah. I got to tell you, I thought it so was pretty impressive. we're excited if they come back in. I am assuming very shortly, because like I said, they've updated the photo. Yeah, the, yeah, so that's on Amazon if you're wondering where they updated it. So if you're wondering about that. Now, I'm... Uh, I'm just keep layering in the yellows. I remember this is the painting that we are giving away tonight. So if you guys want to um, uh, enter Make to sure win it. Make sure you enter to win it. You have to be live on the show at the time we're airing it. Um, Jenny likes to know, Jenny, has Ginger ever seen a red-faced sunflower? Yes. Really? Yeah. Were they embarrassed? I think that uh, they've got them in, you know, the, you can get them in color. I'm never sure when I buy these things if they didn't just put something in the plant food to... To make the color? To make the color. I don't think I've ever seen a red face. I'd have to Google that and see if I can find one. I think I, I, think I know what she's talking about. Oh, Candy said her her brushes were already in a card holder. Was that in a card holder? Yes. Really? They were over there against the wall. Yes. Huh. Well, I'm... I guess we were so excited to get in it. Well, they had to, the box is bigger because they didn't make room for that extra. They did double size the tube of white and gave you a small white too. Don't know what the price will be. They didn't have pricing on it. Yeah, we don't know, but I think it's encouraging that they put it in. And like I still I think say, whatever it is, it's still it, worth it. We got a lot of paintings out of that kit. We did. And you know, like I say, if you're still um, um, wanting um, um, some, if you're still having trouble finding the, you know, all your colors in the gold in Jerry's Art of Robin, San Antonio, Texas has that. George Rodriguez said he and he the six by eight canvases. Six by eight canvases too. So if you're looking for those. Because uh, that they will be out on Jerry's till September. We have no idea if the discount link will still work. The worst thing it'll do is they just won't work. I would just put it in there once they're available and try it. She has not really gotten in touch with that. Their rep. Well, here. yeah, she hasn't since she doesn't have the product and she doesn't really know what she can do with it. Sally, thank you for the super chat donation. You two together is what makes this so special. Nobody liked the silent treatment. 
Well, see, this is good to know then, isn't it? Yeah. Because, you know, we get letters from people. Ooh. Jenny even grows the red ones. She'll send me a pic. Okay. She's my Canadian buddy, B. Eh? We got people all around the world. That's the one thing is that this paint, you know, after it's been out a while, it crusts over. Salvador didn't do that. Salvador never crusted on me. This is an observation. Just didn't do I that. I wonder if because it's a flow body versus a heavy body. Well, it could be any of those things, but. Um, oh, does anybody know who painted the picture of the Alba puzzle? Yeah, we're not telling you yet. We'll tell you when the picture's done. We're, I'm sorry, we're not sharing that. Please don't share it if you know. We're trying to keep some of the stuff a little bit, you know, to ourselves. So don't share it if you know. I can't even remember. But just don't share it if you know. It makes it more fun. And when we get the puzzle all done, we'll include the name of the um, of the art original artist, and we'll do an unveiling of all your work, which is kind of important. John, do you send emails to the winners of the auction? I do if they have not paid after X amount of time, and I've got three that need to be have an invoice sent, so I will do that probably tonight. Al says the Academy is very much worth what it costs. Thank you, Al. Thank you. So we've got our... Jillian didn't care for you two not talking. <laughs> Seems like Mommy and Daddy were fighting. Uh, isn't that <laughs> funny? That is so interesting. I'm so glad we did that the way we did it so yeah. you guys could see it. Because, I mean, I mean... I was keeping up with all the answers and doing everything. And Oh, now Judy has a good question. John, since I've lost almost 60 pounds, can I still use the heavy body paint? I'm thinking you should go to the flow paint now, Judy. Well, I think I think the question becomes, Judy, and this is a really good one, is the, the not that all your questions aren't good, Judy. They're all brilliant, but as, as you're singing, boys. <laughs> but that being said, you've got to ask yourself, am I a flow painter or am I a heavy body painter? What What's easier for you to do? Because it, if, if you're talking about, um, most paintings can be done with flow paint. And they go on, and particularly for small detail, they go on very smoothly. When you're doing a heavy body paint, it's a little bit like painting with oatmeal. It's a little bit more challenging, maybe with, you know, or maybe cream of wheat or something. It's a little thicker. So, therefore, you have a little bit more, um, what would be the way we'd say it, John? You, you, you just have a little bit more uh, work to do to, uh, to paint it. And so some people, uh, but the thing about the, the so um, in an ideal world, if you were just feeling really rich, you'd have both. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You'd just have both. Because you'd sometimes have both. you want, see, like now she's doing her petals, and she would like to keep some thickness behind in some of those. Yeah, and, and all this thickness. body, you're not going to do that. Like, like all now. the thickness, that, like right in here that I'm dropping all this little paint in here like this for the around the edge. Now, Which, if you had the floats, couldn't you just add the gel to do that? Um, yeah. Is it going to give you the same effect? No. But you could, but you could add a little modeling paste or something. You could, yes, you could, absolutely you could, John. That's a very good point. You sure. So could. I feel like I'm more of a flow person because I did watercolors, and I was always very smooth and very flat and very, you know. You, and then you come to Ginger, and hers is her paintings are very expressive and full of color, but she needs a heavy body to do that. Yeah. So and and remember, everything is layered. So ideally speaking, for instance, one thing that flow is wonderful about is, uh, you know, more of a flow paint is wonderful when you're trying to get certain, um, uh, you're trying to get certain, you know, very thin lines. So we always have at least, you, we, you should have at least a, um, uh, at least a white and a, um, a, and a, maybe a dark brown for flow, for sure. It's generally not as uh, translucent. Um, let's put something lighter in here like that. There you go. Adding a few more colors to this. You think that these are just all one color, but they're not. 
we just keep adding a few little colors to these grapes here. Let's say somebody's hiding over there, okay? So now, what I need to do now is dry this one more time. Oh, we could do our special promo piece from the Roberto Matic. Yeah, now, these are so rare, you guys. When you see this... You can't um, even get them anymore. You can't get them anymore, but we wanted to share this with you because we got one as a gift. And wait till you see... Because we know people. We know people. And wait till you see... This is Liz's husband, Bob. And this is... This is the Roberto Matic... Automatic bread slicer. Wait till you see it. All right, I'm going to dry. We'll be right back. In these trying times, many of you have found that bread is not available. And so you've made your own bread. Great idea. However, as most of you know, when you try to slice your bread, you've tried different ways of doing it. And as you make a slice, you find out that your slices look more like this than anything else. <clears throat> It's just so frustrating. So you've tried different tools. Let's try this. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Oh, oh, I need something bigger. Uh, uh, it's too, too sharp, too many blades. Uh, I know, I know. Let's get the big guns out. Uh, too much tool, too much tool. Oh. Ah, ah, enter the Handy Way Bread Slicer by Chef Robert. Out with the cutting board, in with the easy pad. This is only $14.95 extra when you order the breadboard. The easy cut breadboard, two sides, one for thin slices, one for thick slices and also bagels. And even for those of you that never eat bagels, it's good for that too. So, most people would put this on here this way and cut it like this. But that's how you wind up with this and are frustrated. So, enter the easy way cutting board. The bread goes this way. And with the 10 inch knife, which is only $39.95 extra when you order the cutting board. Go across like this, cutting smoothly, letting the knife do the work. Voila! Perfect thin slice. Perfect thin slice. Order today, but wait, but wait. If for an extra fee, a small extra fee, no, you don't get another one, but the $49.95 shipping fee is excluded. So order now. Operators are waiting for your call in the next 10 minutes. We're waiting. We're waiting for your call. So call now. Make it quick. Remember the special offer and the code word is when the duck comes down, he'll pay you $100. Thanks for watching and call now. Call now. Okay, you guys. So here's the here's here's our slicer. And Look piece, at that slice of bread. And that's and if you're wondering who's Bob besides being Liz's husband, you know, moderator Liz's husband. He also was the Ask Bob one for the quarantine. Uh, he was our retired th th therapist. No, he was a. He can't use that word. Can't use <laughs> that word, but else. whatever. He was something special. And, and he knows people. <laughs> anyway, that's a, it was asked by Bob, not a, a man of many talents. We thought you'd get a kick out of that. I thought that was really funny. Uh, boy, that bread smells good. Wow. <laughs> wow, John made that bread. That's, so we finally got the, 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 person, the, the person of you that was watching that told us to get the bread slicer from, um, uh, not the bread slicer, but told us to get the, the flour to make our own bread from at King Arthur's directly. Thank you very much. Because we, that's because we could, I don't think John can still find bread in the stores, but no. bread flour in the stores. But the, somebody told us to go directly to the, the source. To the horse's mouth, to as To the it were. source, as it were. And, um. So we wanted to share that with you. The Absolutely. Bob Matic, Roberto Matic. 
Yeah, that's, we just thought it was funny. I, when he s sent that to us, it just he didn't really intend for us to put it on the air, and we just did it anyway because we're brats, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> just because we can. Because we can, Nothing and I'm sorry, sacred. Bob. You, you didn't if you want give us, it to us, it's fair game. It's fair game. It could happen. That you know, it could go anywhere. <laughs> just um, let me zoom back in here. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just adding the next last layers of yellow on on the on the highlights on our. You're probably getting pretty close to finishing up here. So I am getting pretty to, close uh, to finishing up. Yes and yes. So we're gonna to want to get a drawing. So last last opportunity to get into drawing for this wonderful painting that you can call your very own with Ginger's signature on it. Well, yeah, they could. Yeah, it'll. It'd be signed and mailed to you regardless of whether of you live you in Timbuktu in or Kalamazoo. Oh, we'll Kalamazoo. send it to you. Ha! You're so clever. I'm a poet. And you didn't know it. But my feet show it. They're Longfellows. <laughs> we are digressing quickly. <laughs> Don't you remember that? Do you remember doing that? Do you no, just, I'm sorry. I just you don't know, you just well I don't know, maybe girls have different things that they that they do. What do you think? Do you think that girls are a little Oh I forgot to do a thumbs up. How could I do that? How That's about subscribing too, as long as you're just out there, you know, tootling along with us. Yes and yes. Well, we strongly recommend you do subscribe to us because we could go live at a moment's notice. Our normal hours of operation. Don't you like that? We have normal hours of operations are Monday and Thursday at 5.30. They'll be structured pretty much how the second half of this show was, seeing how you didn't like the first half. And sometimes we're going to go live at a moment's notice, so you want to subscribe and hit that little bell, because sometimes, like today, I try to send out a notice, and the server that we used to send out the notice was having problems, so it got that sent out late. And if we're going live, it's usually like, like within an hour or two that we end up going live. So make sure you turn that little bell and subscribe. We also like to thank Cindy for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. Bless yes, you. And yes, Very thank much. you so much. Wow, so she's, that is lovely. Oh, yeah, um, King Arthur is the only flower to use. And, and they were really, it, 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 was, took, it took a couple weeks, but we got it, right? Yeah. You know, and, and we we bought enough where we don't have to order them again. And it was lovely, wasn't it? Well, used to, I never heard of it, but apparently used to use that in Michigan, right? Absolutely. That's all you, people that bake, you use King Arthur. I mean, that's just a given. Well, why is that, John? <laughs> it's like certain paints. It's just a given. All right. Okay. Why did you say 10.30 p.m.? Did I say 10.30 p.m. going live? Ooh, let's make that 5.30. Maybe it's 10.30 where you are. No, it's 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Thanks, Jillian. How many ounces are the mug? We are told they are 11 ounces. We've got some. They're nice. The dishwasher's safe. You can use them. They're good. They're good muggies. Oh, yeah. But a lot of our moderators have got them, for sure. Well, I, I just think they're a nice way to commemorate um, this time we've all been spending together for the last few weeks. Yes and yes? So we're going to have to go back through all the chat. We're going to have to rewatch the show to see if people wanted to have a, our mug on the mugs. I like the idea of putting a little baby of a, us on there. On the back, maybe, or something. Well, I just thought it might be fine. I wasn't sure, sure if anybody would want it, but it, it occurred to me, so I figured we'd ask. We're not trying to be crazy. We just thought we'd ask. Lorraine says, I will only come back if John promises to be part of the show. I was part. I was just a silent partner. Well, he was answering all the questions and everything, doing all that stuff he normally does. He just was kind of, you know, keep, you know, playing it cool. Cool, yeah. Daddy-O. Yeah, we're going to go into a little color surprise here uh, in a couple places. Just. Oh, that's a good one. What? What's a good one? Why Why don't you act like a tree and just leave? Well, who who would say that? You didn't have that one? Now, that one I heard over your long follows. Well, I just didn't. I like my friends better than that. Why would I say that to them? That John, I posted a pessary rose for you and Luann on Facebook. No, I didn't see it. Luann, you're supposed to copy that stuff for me. Let's throw Luann under the bus. I've gotten two other uh, pizza recipe doughs, recipes to try, and I even got a video. Never sent me a video. Of what? 
of how she made her dough. Okay. Yep. Is that right? Yep. I got fans. Well, I got fans good. in the kitchen. I'm going to start my own cooking show. Well, you could do that. John is a wonderful cook. No question about it. And even speaking of that, dinner is cooking as we speak. I yes. used the Instant Pot today. Got Did chicken you? in one and rice in the other. I thought we're you said we were having pizza. going to make ourselves a little sweet and sour chicken. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Well, I think we're about, you know, I feel like we've got... Um, Success. We've got, we've got some success here. We're just putting a few... I'm really liking the way this one looks. I, 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 I have to admit, it looks a lot better than the photograph. Well, I just... Um, thanks, John. Just... Um, King Arthur is the oldest flower company in the United States. Is that right? Well, obviously it must be right or she wouldn't have said that, but still, that's very interesting, right? <laughs> no pun intended. Yes and yes? I'll take anybody's recipe. Just use the contact us. Because we're in cooking mode. We're still not going out. I'm not going out. No. No, we're not going out. Absolutely not, right? There we go. Oh, Tony Let's says, yes, we got a lot of yeses for the mug of your mug. Okay. Well, I'll tell you if we, I'll tell you what, if we ever um, get anywhere where, um, like, for instance, if hopefully, we, we were hoping if travel eases up, at some point we might be able to do some meetups and stuff with people. Kind of hoping that, right? Yeah, we are. And, you know, we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a a special Sharpie and sign them. If anybody brings one. Is it, would a Sharpie stay on? Yeah, but well, there's a special one they... Oh, yeah, the ceramic one. There's a yeah, ceramic one. They have, yeah. they have them. Yeah. They have them. Um... It's, what's interesting to me is that um, um, just want a little bit some a little bit lighter color here in a couple places. Uh, it's, what's interesting is to me is that uh, Sharpie. If you ever look them up, they've got pens that'll write on 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 space shuttles on the moon or something. I mean, it's just they've space got shuttles on the moon. <laughs> Okay, so apparently we have our moon base set up that I read about when I was, what, seven, eight? Yeah, I'm telling John. So it's there, and nobody told me? I had to hear it from you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, how do I get on to that? I can't tell you. It's a secret. Uh, it's a secret. It's a secret. Man, space shows on them. I knew they weren't doing them in the U.S. anymore, so they went to the moon with them. Yeah. They 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 you can always, they can they have so they wise. have um, they have pens that will work under the water to way low depths. And Very low depth. Yeah, like Very deep. low depth. Okay. Like that's that means deep, John. Very low <laughs> depth. <laughs> I'm really I'm, I'm having trouble with that statement. Very low depth. Hello. Listen, you try. Where do you come up with this stuff? I bet you stay up at night and come up with this stuff just to torment me, don't you? Space shuttles on them. I knew it. <laughs> I knew they had it there. I was wondering where they put them, and only you would know. I know things. You do. I don't know. You have share, a T-shirt that says that. I know things. Just ask me. I know things, right? Oh. You can't, now, Al, you, Al, can't discard, you can't discount this stuff. Cause no, you, no, because you you're the queen and you know and I could know th And I could know it and you then you'd be sorry you challenged me on it. And, and I, I, you know I wouldn't want to do that, my no, queen. No, but well, why would you want to do that? <laughs> I couldn't do that. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. All right, the last chance to get in for the winning... Any yep. chance of so we're about on we're about apron. done here, you guys. This is the last. This is the last of our. Um, uh, we don't have aprons. Pick me, pick me, pick me. The last one of this. And remember, if you if it's drawing darker on you, I'll try to get this in time. But if it's drawing darker on you, 
what do you have to do? You have to lighten it up then, right? And uh, that's mostly yellow with a little bit of green. If your green got too dark, like that, see? Like this green got a little dark here. So we had to lighten it up, yes and yes. And once again, Judy is showing her brilliance following your lead. How do you use brushes in zero gravity? Think about it, my queen. Hmm? I don't know, Judy. You know, I, I just know that, to, that if you go onto that Sharpie website and you look at uh, the actual probably have company a way to is do called it. Stafford. And they've got pens that are, it's just amazing what they can do. I was so amazed when I Googled them some years ago that they had so much, um, there was so much of that that was, um, here we go. All right, that's our painting for the day. If somebody wants to uh, win this, John, they should do Ooh, it Will somebody now. want to win it? Let's see if anybody wants to win it. Oh, 400 souls want to win it. Okay. All right, I am going to be picking a win winning number from our room.org, which uses sound in the room to generate its funny number. I know you people don't care. Well, certainly the queen doesn't care. But... I like to know the technical stuff. Good. Al was working on version 2.0 of the, of the Roberto Matic. He was going to do a vertical, a, a perpendicular board to it so he can lay it down and make it even easier. Really? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You give guys a project and we'll just go to town. And, and yeah, a project and very little, you know. Very little what? What were you going to say, McQueen? Very little what? I'm sorry. Did well, you, you know uh, what I. N no, I don't know, my queen. Very little what? Remember, dinner has not been served yet. Just saying. Hasn't it? <laughs> Never mind. Not, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> okay, we have 407 souls. We're going for this little puppy. Remember, anybody in the world. Happy Martians are not allowed at the moment, even though I want to go back to Mars so I can have my extra two hours of daylight. Yep, anybody in the world, right? Anybody in the world. Yes and yes. And I have a winner, winner chicken dinner. Oh, that's what we're having tonight, too. This and is going to go, go to Washington. Washington? Really? I guess I think it must like be Washington, Washington State. State. I think so, because it's Ocean Shores, Washington. Well. So that really nails the person, because I believe there's only going to be one person on this show tonight from Ocean Shores, Washington. You think so? I think so. They're probably jumping up and down now, hooting and hollering. I'm going to give you guys the, the results on Thursday's show on my question was, are things getting a little bit back to normal for you? Because there's yeah, some interesting comments in here, and... We'll get a tally on that, so we'll find out. Yeah, let's... Um, It'll be yeah, Thursday show at 5.30 Central Time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and sign this here. Oh, I get to sign it, too? You said we. Well, and it's it so funny because we're not knowing... We're not doing any... Um, we're not writing QQs anymore. No, QQs are over. So those were collected edition paintings for sure, weren't they? Yep. Hopefully, we won't have to do that again. One of our painting, paint, because painting is that person. Ah. Linda Kaiser. Congratulations, Linda. Who is out there somewhere? Is she? I would hope so. Linda, if you're still out there, use the contact us on gingercooklive.gallery and send me your mailing address. And for those of you who are going to be commenting after the show... The question um, is... The question we want to know is, what would you like to see for Thursday? Our Thursday show, what would you like us to... What do you think would be nice for Thursday? We'd love good, to know, right? That's a good right? question. What would you like us to paint? Is this boy, this is going to get lighter if I have to just do it six times, man. <laughs> so, Linda, this painting will eventually get done for you, and uh, <laughs> just well, Linda was bu bugging me. You could you could appreciate that, right? Because it wasn't it wasn't light enough. There you go. That's fine. That 
it dried and then there it was, right? So there's our red slash through it. Um, I don't see Linda responding out there anywhere as of yet. It could have gone by, though. Things go by very quickly, don't they? They do. Hey, to everybody, Thursday we will be back for another live... Let me just see if I can find this. Oh, here. Oh, just... that is perfect. I was going to say, can you put it on purple? Yeah, what do you guys think? you like it? I do. So here's the d different yellows. We did this yellow. <laughs> we did... Um, okay, don't, don't tell them the name. Just say... Cat just yellow medium there. and then a yellow light. And then we did that sun... It's like a sunflower the, yellow. This it's was the called marigold. Marigold, but somebody else said it was similar to Indian yellow, which it is. Or you could mix it by adding a little cad red to Very your little. other yellow, right? All right. That's so, it. There you go, you guys. That's what we Dinner's did. Dinner's calling us. All right. Was this fun? Thanks for joining. And so we'll, what's the question? What do you want to see tomorrow? On what Thursday? do you want to see on Thursday? Thursday. All Give right. suggestions for Thursday's painting. See you. Bye, right. everyone. Bye.